the Navy design elements for the USS Albacore mimic the body of the Albacore fish itself, giving the submarine its streamlined shape and its high speed as it travels through the ocean. One of the things you'll notice about the USS Albacore is that it has counter-rotating props instead of a single or dual screw. This was one of the experimental designs the Navy worked with in the early design phase of the Albacore. Another unique design element of the USS Albacore is the rudder mounted at the rear of the conning tower. The Navy experimented with this design and then upon sea trials decided that they didn't like it because the submarine tended to snap and roll at such a rate making it dangerous for the occupants inside. Now here's a unique design element of the USS Albacore, something you'll never see on another Navy submarine. A porch door in the side of the hull. Another piece of Navy equipment that no one ever wants to use, the forward escape trunk. In an emergency, crewmen would enter this bell, which would be filled with water to equal the pressure, and then they could exit the submarine safely and make their way to the surface for rescue. I'm inside the commanding officer's stateroom. The commanding officer and the executive officer, they'd fight over who got the top bunk. <laughs> As you can see, it's cramped, it's small, but this was home for the CO. Remember when you were little and your mom said, clean up the sink after you're finished. There you go, you're cleaned up and ready to go. I'm seated in the officer's ward room. This is where the officers of the boat ate their meals, conducted meetings, or conducted the boat's business. This ward room could also be used for additional berthing. The settees on either side of the room could be converted into berths, and the one that I'm seated at could actually be converted into two bunks. The seating position was one bunk, and the back could be folded up and supported from the overhead compartment for another bunk. Mmm, comfy. I'm located in the forward battery. Below us, the batteries which power the boat, its electrical systems and instrumentation are housed. Behind me, or where I'm crouched at the moment, is the, the boat's office. The uh, yeoman who would man this space would take care of all of the boat's paperwork and files. And to my right, 
off camera is the goat locker. No, it's not a Navy farm experiment. It's where the boat's senior petty officers would sleep. This is a berthing arrangement in a submarine. You can tell how confined it is, how small it is, how tight it is. It's about the size of a closet. The bunks or the racks are stacked vertically and crewmen on a submarine, they work around the clock. Two men sleep, one man works. When the shift changes, that sailor comes off duty and climbs into a hot bunk. This is the albacore's radio room. Another space about the size of a closet with sophisticated electronic gear for contacting ships and aircraft in the area. The radio men who occupied this space was responsible for the hydraulics that would raise and lower the ship's antennas. And this is the ship's head. This one toilet served all the men on board this boat. Notice the amenities. Steam fittings, pipes, valves, handles. Where's the soft soap? I'm in the control room of the USS Albacore. It's where you drive this baby. You notice I said drive, side-by-side -side seating with airplane-style steering wheels because a submarine literally flies underwater. To my right, the green indicators. The diving alarm is green. The collision alarm is red. General quarters, general quarters, yellow. I'm at the ship's periscope. Basic optics, nothing fancy like they have today. No TV, no infrared, no night vision. Just basic optics. What am I looking at? The Portsmouth Bay Bridge. No threat there. Across from the control room is the navigation or plot room. This is where the officers of the boat would plot their course and maintain control over the ship's movements both above and under the surface of the ocean. I'm seated in the sonar room of the USS Albacore, the eyes and ears of the boat. They used passive and active sonar. Passive sonar is simply listening, listening for ships on the surface, vessels underwater, or animals in the ocean. Active sonar, where the boat would send out a ping or a signal which would bounce off of suspected targets, either on the surface or underwater, and come back to the headphones that the sonar men used. Across from the sonar room is the radar room. The ship's radar would look for aircraft or surface contacts. There was a small dome that could be raised from the conning tower, which would send information to the man who was posted here. 